I'm recording now. All right, thank y'all for joining me today uh, for the Covenant Man podcast, season one, episode two. And today I got my good friends, Joshua and Lacey Jenkins. And uh, today's episode is gonna be good. We're doing submission and leadership in marriage and what it really means to be biblically submitted and what it means to lead biblically. Because uh, I feel like a lot of people don't know the difference between submission and domination. And, you know, they just feel like submitting means, well, I just got to do what my husband say, or, you know, like, I don't got no say. So, today we got some good friends on here. They're going to tell us what it really means to be submitted and to lead in uh, marriage biblically. So, thank y'all for joining me today, Joshua and Lacey. So, if y'all can introduce yourselves, you know, just tell a little bit about how y'all met. Then I'll get into the questions after. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking us to um, do this because we feel honored and pri yeah. privileged and it was very encouraging. So thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> so I'll let Lacey take it away on um, how we actually met and I'll just yeah. uh, fill, in, fill in the gaps, I guess. Cool. So I was in um, anesthesia school at the time, and I felt like I needed to get involved in a church. I just felt God pulling me to um, just get involved somewhere, and somebody mentioned High Point. And so I went, and I went through the growth track and stuff like that, and then I realized, like, okay, I want to um, serve in the youth. And um, that's where we met, and that was at a point where – I I had been dating all in my 20s, like trying to find that guy. I wanted to be married. I wanted to have kids. And I was on the search. And then, so it was more in my power. And that wasn't working. <laughs> so I would eventually like just gave up like, all right, God, I'll be celibate the rest of my life. I'll be single if that's what you called me to do. And I'm fine. Yeah. And as soon as I gave that to him, <laughs> I met him. I came back to him. <laughs> <laughs> And it's kind of interesting, too, because I was kind of in a similar situation uh, at the time, being on staff at High Point Church, working with the youth and doing outreach ministry. I was just like gung-ho for ministry, but I knew I wanted to have that that one lady who can, like, be there with me to weather the storms and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to make all these different relationships work, and they will always fall flat on their face. Yeah. And I was like, all right, God, this is really frustrating. Uh, I, like she said, I'm doing things in the end of my own power and of my own strength. And the moment I said, right, you know what, God, it's just me and you. Like, it's, it's almost as if he highlighted her because she was at the church. Yeah. I, I knew her. It was a lot like we had mutual friends. We were part of the same, you know, college and 20-something group and everything. And she had always been there. Uh, and I, I've known about it. I, I actually remember when she first came to the church, uh, and started serving the youth. I remember all of that. But it wasn't until then that God kind of sort of like, oh, you know, you know, <laughs> highlight like, okay, check this, this is this is your Eve, Joshua, you know. Yeah. Uh so I, I definitely don't uh, regret that. Uh this back in 2014. And then uh one thing led to another. We started courting and mm -hmm. later on uh November proposed to her got married that same year in December. So yeah. we didn't have a really long engagement. Yeah. We knew what we wanted. We talked about all those things up front. So it was a really easy decision. So yep. oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. This is very encouraging, man. Cause <laughs> so, with Josh, I know you know personally, man, like me, I've been kind yeah. of to the same type of deal. Just yeah. to seeing the same situation but with different faces. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. I feel like there's something that's hard for our generation to grasp. You know what I'm saying? Like um I don't know if I said it in one of my other episodes, but the age of marriage, the average age of marriage since like the 20s has risen from, I think it was 20 in women and like 22 in men to 30 in men and 28 wow. in women. Wow. Really? Like, yeah. That's crazy. I was 27. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and so wow. I feel like, uh, like we're not getting married. You know what I'm saying? And then when we do yeah. get married, we know that the divorce rate for like uh -huh. and yeah and Christians especially in the United States like fifty five percent something like that now. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that's why you know I reached out to y'all because I'm like man this is a couple who you know what I'm saying like somebody I look up to you know like mm -hmm. I look up to y'all and I, I admire y'all marriage and I see you know like it's a balance you know what I'm saying it's not yeah. you not dominating Josh and then let <laughs> you not you know yeah. like. You don't overstep yeah. boundaries. Like I've seen you yeah. let him lead. You know what I'm saying? So that's why 
I feel like, you know, this would be a perfect episode for y'all. So. <laughs> Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you man. I, I appreciate that observation and that encouragement, man. That's, that, that, that means more to, more to us than you know, bro. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into the questions. And so um, the way I did the questions, I kind of, uh, I did each question, you know, like one for you, one for you, and then like mm -hmm. uh, the last two, I think both, the both, they both are two-part questions, you know, so each part will have, you know, Somebody answer. So the first question is for you, Josh. Um, mm -hmm. What does it mean for you to truly lead in a marriage? Okay. Um, uh, th that's a really, really interesting question. I feel like it's kind of like two parts on that. I'm going to try to be as brief as possible. Okay. Uh, so if you look at what the Bible says about uh, specifically men or husbands leading in the marriage, it doesn't say for us to lead in a marriage. Yeah. If you go to Ephesians 5.25, it literally says, husbands, mm -hmm. love your wives. Mm. Yeah. That'll preach woman. That's good. <laughs> it says, <laughs> love your wives, Ephesians 5.25. It doesn't say anything about leading. Yeah. But we, I understand what the question that you're asking. So this was a, a, a truth that kind of hit me like in a really personal way a few years back. And to me, um, as a husband, I'm called to lead my wife in the way that I love her. And a lot of times, like, we hear that, and we're like, okay, how does, how does that practically look to, uh, to love our wives? And it goes back to things like this. It doesn't mean ruling with an iron fist, right. which is exactly the, the good reaction that women hear when they hear about, you know, uh, submitting to their husbands. Like, you know, you know, go out and, like, you know, burn your bras, like, show them that that this ain't that, you know, type of deal. That's not what it means for a man to lead a man to be domineering or dominating, right? Uh, practically, me loving my wife or leading her by the way that I love her, it looks like stuff like this, listening to her, yeah. right? It looks like giving her my undivided attention, right? It looks like placing boundaries on other relationships uh, outside of ours, right? Uh, it looks like uh, rejecting passivity. Right, making decisions and including her in the decision making. Yeah. Right, that's what it looks like for me to practically love her, not being harsh to her in her her responses. Right, not being harsh to her in my responses. Right, when she says something that sounds kind of cattywampus, I'm just like, what was that? You know, not being harsh to her in those situations. Right, uh, and being emotionally available. A lot of times we think leading the marriage means, all right, you know, make sure you taking care of her sexually taking care of her financially, bringing home the bacon, and that's it. No, that's a cultural view of, of, of uh, uh, leading in the marriage, just those things. But it's so much more than that, right? And uh, it's kind of crazy. If you think about all those things that I listed off, those are all things that most men generally suck at. Yeah. <laughs> Listening, mm -hmm. not being harsh in our responses rejecting passivity, including her decision-making. Mm -hmm. All those things are things that we genuinely suck at. And that's why God made a command, husband loves your wives, because mm -hmm. he knew that would be the thing that we would suck at and that we would need help at. And this is, to me, this is the wisdom of God. He commands us to do something that us and ourselves, we can't do. Yeah. So it forces us to be in submission to God and his spirit so that we can accurately lead our wives through loving her. So it's, it's almost like it's a full circle, right? And the second part kind of ties into that. It's like, to me, the way that a husband leads in marriage should be through his personal example of his submission to God. Yeah. In other words, you can't expect for your wife to submit to you when you're not submitting to God. Yeah. It's like putting the cart before the horse. We're called to lead by example. Like, and there's one verse specifically that comes to mind, and it's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verse 3. And here's what he says. It's talking about alignment and how God created things, right? Yeah. He said, but there is one thing I want you to know. The head of every man mm -hmm. is Christ, yeah. right? The head of woman is man, mm -hmm. and the head of Christ is God. So you look at that verse. Even Christ, the Savior, has a head. Yeah. So what makes us think that we shouldn't be in submission? Mm -hmm. Like being married, 
means being in submission to one another. Mm -hmm. And that looks differently. Submission for men looks like us loving our wives. Mm -hmm. Submission for women, it looks like them respecting us, right? Mm -hmm. It's a give and take. Yeah. And both should be submitting to God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a synergy that's happening, right? So when a husband submits to God, it sets the atmosphere and the tone for the wife to trust his leadership, yeah. right? It makes no sense to go into a marriage without the help of the person who created marriage, yeah. God, right? And uh, there's a resource that I, I, I would love to share with people. Uh, Dr. Tony Evans does a great, 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 great series called Kingdom Man that, that oh, highlights those very things that I'm talking about. So uh, a lot of times we talk about the idea of like leading and submission in marriage. Mm. It seems like the wife is the only one doing the submitting. Yeah. And that's problematic. The husband is submitting too. Mm -hmm. And th that word head in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 3, it simply means covering, protection, or responsibility. Yeah. So the, the protection and the covering of every man is Christ. The protection and responsibility and covering of every woman is a man. Mm -hmm. And the protection and covering of Christ is God. So that's my, I guess, loaded answer to yeah. uh, what's like to truly lead in marriage. So yeah. I'll pass it off to Lacey. Great job. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Oh, look, okay. Man, I know this question is not on here, but uh, it's something you, something you said, you, it was two things you said. One thing was about setting boundaries with relationships, you know, with people outside of your wife. And then mm -hmm. another one was when you were talking about the emotional side of the man, you know, mm -hmm. on our emotions and leave it. So, um, question that came in my head, I saw a post on Facebook the other day, and it said, okay. you know, as a man, you're not supposed to vent to, you know, your girlfriend, your wife, and all that. Oh, look at this. We got another friend on this now. <laughs> we got yeah. a friend on this He making his debut, I guess. <laughs> but, um, Okay, so if you can, you know, like, try to give me a brief, you know, like, answer to this. Uh, but how do you feel about, because, um, okay, I'll say this. I've heard it, you know, said that, of course, as uh, in a marriage, you know, you know, you shouldn't want to put, like, all of your emotional weight onto your spouse, you know what I'm saying? Like, of course, yeah. they'll be there for you, you know, when you need it. But, like, it's good to have friends of the same sex. So, how do you feel about, um, like that whole concept of like, like culture teaching men not to vent to our wives and you know and our girlfriends. Like, how does that? How do you see this? The culture teaching men to not vent or to, uh, it seems like I guess you clarify for me. Like not, um, not expressing their emotions to their significant others. What you mean, right? Yeah, like, like mm -hmm. I just you know what I'm saying like showing all your emotions, but like. If you yeah. mad or you, you know what I'm saying, like you feel upset about something, don't go to your wife, like go to your homeboys or go to your, you know. No. Like, how well, I, 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 I'll start off by letting Lacey uh, okay. share her sense on that because this is something that she's obviously very, very uh, adamant about. Um, I'll let her share it and I'll come back behind it. Okay. Um, I guess what, what he was coming from for us is like basically like if i if he's at the grocery store or something and i'm not there and mm -hmm. another he's talking with another woman like mm -hmm. you know just like in passing like hey how you doing mm -hmm. or whatever maybe he knows or maybe he doesn't like there should be a limit to how long he talks to her yeah. no matter like how old she is what she looks like like if she's attractive or not like because I feel like there's other women out there that are seeking attention from men they might not be getting from their spouses or their loved one or whatever. And they can take advantage of a man's, a man's attention. Mm -hmm. And sometimes men um, don't see it, but I think women, like we've, we have an instinct. Yeah, instinct, intuition that we see that other women are like wanting that attention from our man. Mm -hmm. And our our men just need to be more aware of that yeah. and cut that time off. Like, 
all right, I got to go. Nice talking to you because it's a respect thing for your wife. Like that's where he was coming from with that. So, yeah. but you can speak on yeah. the um, venting thing. Yeah. So, um, man, personally, uh, I can't think of any, um, I can't really think of any time that I haven't really uh, vented my emotions to you. Uh, I, know, I can speak for some men who have a hard time expressing their emotions or, or formulating the words to explain to their spouses or significant other how they're feeling. And for me, like, it, I mean, it's just how God wired me. A lot of times when I'm trying to vent or whatever to my wife, I have to put it in pictures. So uh, women are very, very emotionally aware of how they're feeling. I had a, a friend of mine explain to me how God wired men and women, men and women differently. Yeah. And the way she put it was, you know, uh, when it concerns women or girls, uh, well, I'll speak for men first. When it concerns men, our emotions are tend to be like uh, that, you know, uh, that eight pack of Crayola crayons, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the eight pack, you know, if we're mad, we're mad. That's real, yeah. you know. If we're sad, we're sad. That's blue, mm -hmm. you know. If, if we're if we're jealous, we're green. That's 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 what it is. Mm -hmm. But for women, they're like that, you know. Legendary eighty six pack, eighty six pack of uh, Crayola crayons. Yes. Where they have different shades and tints <laughs> of each color. So yeah. you know, and, and they have the the crayon sharpener on the back, yeah. so they can sharpen their emotions. And they're aware of that. And it's hard for men to navigate that because, like, we can barely we can barely express the eight the eight color color crayon box that we have when it concerns our emotions. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, like, Lacey is my safe safe haven, mm -hmm. right? And I feel a lot better uh, venting my emotions to her how I feel about things because she's my wife. Yeah, uh, and I think women want that. They want or, that. Or the yes. wife wants yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Want their husband yes. to share. Even if it's about them, yep. they want them to share and communicate as much as possible. Yes, that's that that's something that's going to grow the intimacy. And, and I and I feel like this. A lot of times, it's easy for men to go and and chat with the homeboys about, uh, you know, deep issues, uh, because like they don't want any friction with their spouse if they would have have to bring some of those things up. But a pastor, my pastor friend of mine, shared with me like, man, uh, friction is what makes fire, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same way in your marriage. Like when, when, when you and your wife are in a discussion, you're bending, you're working through things. Mm -hmm. That's that's cultivating intimacy in y'all's relationship, whether you believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. Uh, and once y'all get through it, it's gonna strengthen your marriage, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And just the obvious reason. Why would I rather vent to my wife than my my friends about issues specifically concerning our relationship? Yeah. Um, I I go home and I I sleep and I live with my wife. I don't sleep and live with my homeboys. Right. Yeah. I mean that's just like the logical thing. Like yeah. she's the mother of my of, of my kids. Like she has more buy in and more say so in my itinerary and what I do than anybody else that's walking the earth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what it also looks like to lead in a marriage is yeah. to realize, just like the scripture says, your body is not your own. Mm -hmm. Like the husband, husband's body. I don't think it just means his body. I think it means his time and his attention mm -hmm. belongs solely to his wife in most cases yeah. and vice versa. Right. Um, that's that whole submission piece coming back. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I can't really see myself you know, in a really, really deep vending session with even some of the guys that I feel like I'm, I'm the closest to because she's my number one best friend. So she's supposed to know about everything anyway. Yeah. But that's, that's just my opinion. So yeah. I, I, I'm in total agreement with what she's saying. I feel like that's the reason why um, our marriage is, is growing step by step because right. we talk through those things and we work through those things. Yeah. I'm really, really gullible. And she can see things that I don't see. Right. We the same. That's I mean, you know, like she she compliments me in that in that regard. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember exactly where else. And I I think I know it's in the a book of Songs of Solomon, where uh, it talks about um, you know watch out for the foxes in your garden. Mm -hmm. Right. 
I can't exactly remember the verse, but in my mind, the translation is she was telling her husband to be on guard against anything that will come and destroy what we've built, mm -hmm. right? And that's kind of sort of the position, the biblical position that we take in our marriage. Right? So. That's good. That's good, man. You hit it right on your head, man. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both of y'all, yeah, that's good. Because a lot, I feel like a lot of people, especially like, uh, I'll say, I ran into people probably between like the ages of like 18 and like 21. Mm -hmm. And they asked me like, like, why I can't have friends of the opposite sex and this is that? I'm like, man, you got to understand it has to be a boundary. It can't just be yep. like, oh, you finna go chill over your homegirl house. You know what I'm saying? You got a girlfriend by yourself. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yep. finna go chill over your, your brother house. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, so there's somebody, you know, dealt with. So <laughs> the next question is uh, for you, Lacey, is what does it mean to truly submit to your husband for you? Cool. Um, yeah, so in our culture today, uh, that word submit can definitely make a lot of women feel like it's like condescending, derogatory. Mm -hmm. um, I know for me personally, like I cringe at that word. And that's just because we've grown up in a time and culture where it's like women power, like we can do all things men can do, like we're trying to get equal to them it's on every level. Yeah. And, um, but Truly, the word sub submit or submission means coming under because sub means under, coming mm -hmm. under the mission of. So, mm -hmm. God created the wife to be our husband's helpmeet, mm -hmm. and that's to help meet their vision, mm -hmm. goals, um, their mission. So, if we're to help do that, um, I think it's very important that each uh, marriage mm -hmm. have a family vision or family mission. Oh, yeah. And that way you are centered and you can go back to like um, when it's time to make tough decisions or whatever, mm -hmm. you can go back to that mission. Mm -hmm. um, ours is John 13, 35, which is um, our love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. And so that's our family vision and our marriage vision. Yeah. And so for me to submit is to come under that mission. And so when times are tough or every day, like I'm trying to intentionally be better at loving him and be intentional at loving our kids more. And um, another thing that's very important is to be our husband's biggest cheerleaders and not their critics. Um, it's real easy to find, like when you yeah. get married, it's the easiest thing yes. is to find everything wrong with them. Like you're, I mean, you know that in best friendships, like you're going to pick out what's the wrong quirks. with them. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but um it's important to find what's right with them and like cheer them on and yep. um it's important for your husband to have a goal and a vision and stuff yeah. um yeah. <laughs> that if they don't have that then it's going to be hard for these things that i'm saying but yeah. um when they have that to be able to cheer them on and mm -hmm. not be their critic to me that's what submission is and yep. um that's why god too also said women respect your husbands because mm -hmm. that's hard for women to do because after the fall, like yep. Eve, like wanted to be equal in control. With me. Yeah, in control. And the man struggled with passivity, so yeah, uh, so. we're still wrestling with the, the 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 consequences of that decision. Yeah. Uh, but what submission doesn't mean, and what I feel like deep down, like when I hear that word, what I'm thinking is like I can't say anything, and I have to ask him, can I do? this can I do that or can we buy this can we buy that mm -hmm. like to me that that's not what submission means and I feel like that's what our culture yeah that's like, definitely what the culture puts on you yeah and mm -hmm. we we make decisions like that like together yeah. and we, yeah. we we're we function more so like a team right mm -hmm. so let's just let's just take football for instance right mm -hmm. uh when you play football you obviously have one like main leader that's the quarterback Mm -hmm. But what if the quarterback isn't putting all the points on the board? What if it's the running back? Mm -hmm. Does it matter? Or does it matter that we're both winning? Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. What matters is that we're winning. It doesn't necessarily matter, all right, we're the quarterback, you know, whatever. No, we're a team, yeah. right? And a lot of times if you don't come into a marriage thinking like we're a team or you're coming into a marriage like with just individual agendas and plans and you're going to do your thing and I'm going to do mine. You're going to have your friends. I'm going to have mine. Mm -hmm. Like that's going to be, that's a recipe for disaster yeah. in a marriage. Yeah. So. 
positive. Yeah, see, two things uh, like came to mind when, you know, when Lacey was talking. Uh, one thing was when she was saying, like talking about the man actually having a vision. And I feel like that's, you know, something you lack. And it's like a lot of people growing up now, we're like, okay, well, I just got to get this job, you know what I'm saying, finna get this degree. And then yep. I'm just going to find a wife. But you get into your job, you get into the flow of stuff, and then it's like, okay, where we going? You know what I'm right. saying? John, John Maxwell was like, how can you say you're a leader if ain't nobody following you? Cause yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because y'all live together don't mean she follows yeah. you because you ain't taking her nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So, it was yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, yeah. another thing was, I read this book called The One Minute Manager. And so mm -hmm. he had like three different things that made him a good manager. And one thing was one minute praising. And so mm -hmm. what he wanted to do, he always called his people doing something right. And that way, yeah. when he caught them doing something right, if they did do something wrong, it yeah. made them more uh, receptive to it because you yeah. saw like, everything they did right first. Yeah. Right. He came back and was like, okay, well, you know, I saw you were lacking in this area, but yeah. you were doing this, 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 and this right. And it's going to yeah. motivate them to want to do better. Right. So, you know, they, like, that, was, that was good. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. yeah. some of you here That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's really good. Yeah. All right. So um, we're going to go to the next one. Uh, the next one is, it's a two part question. Uh, and the mm -hmm. first part is, uh, if you don't mind sharing, what was the time that you really like felt pressure to lead and make a big decision? And, you know, that part is for you, Josh. And then the second part is, uh, Lacey, how did you handle, you know, or handle that decision, like helping him with the decision, like helping him through the process? Right. Okay. Um, Okay, so there was there was a moment uh, in our lives, like, okay, give you kind of sort of the context of backstory. Uh, our church was just going through, like, a little split or whatever, and it was really, really detrimental to a whole lot of us, hurt a lot of people emotionally. And uh, there was a time where me and Lacey were trying to work through that. Mm -hmm. And um, I was on the side of, yes, this is really unfortunate. Yes, this hurts. Uh, but I still think that worshiping together corporately with other believers is a high priority for us as a family uh you know every, every week every sunday right that's the time set apart for the lord and with lacy uh she had a harder time working through that and she was her conviction was that i'm perfectly fine worshiping with my family from home right so it was a whole lot of back and forth with that and over time, and after a lot of prayer and sitting down and working through this, um, I mean, I, I stood by my by my guns, right? I understand what the Bible says in Hebrews about not forsaking the gathering or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that, that happens to me personally, happens in us and everybody else collectively, like when we're worshiping corporately together mm -hmm. um, uh, as a family and with other people, you know, other faith. And... Um, the way I led that was sticking to my guns and I would take my sons uh, to, to church uh, with just, just us. It was just our thing. And they gave Lacey some time and some space to heal and also gave her some time away from the kids, you know? So it's, that was a, that was a double, a double whammy. Yeah. And uh, as she worked through that, eventually God highlighted a place for us to, uh, to worship in that season. And, um, she felt healed enough to come back and, and you know worship together with us as a family. So I, I let her share a little yeah. bit more too. Yeah. So it wasn't just like, oh, I'm just gonna let him go. It's fine. Like we had a lot of like elevated volume yeah. conversations about it. Um yeah. and mine was more of like a personal like I'm kind of an introvert. So like yeah. I can recluse myself like from being around people. And so um that was part of it too along with the whole church issue splitting up and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so um, me being perfectly fine being at home was, um, it, was, it was fine for me, but I felt so separated from them when yeah. they went to church. Plus I was, I mean, I know you're not supposed to be worried about what people think, but I felt yeah. like people would probably be like, oh man, they're having marriage problems. Yeah. She's not coming. <laughs> and we weren't having yeah. marriage problems at all. And so, um, he gave me time and space to like heal and just um, figure it out. And then eventually he went and found a great church and he was like, babe, this is going to be our new church home. 
and uh, I was like, eh, but I went the next yeah. Sunday, and um, it was great, like, and I trusted him and respected him, and I knew that, like, got like, I knew that his growth and relationship with God was, like, on point, I guess, <laughs> so I trusted, <laughs> I trusted that, like, he would find a good church for the right reasons, and that was good for us and stuff, and so that was kind of like me letting him lead instead of me being like, no, we're going to worship here. And mm -hmm. like our family's going to be separated on Sundays. And so I uh, eventually got back to going as a family together. Yeah. And now I'm just like, we have like with the coronavirus and everything, yeah. I'm like, we miss it so much because yeah. of yeah. how you feel like worship, worship, worshiping corporately. Yeah. Um, and like, I was just, I was taken aback by myself, like being like, wow, I, that was something I actually yeah. like let him lead in and like trust in him and respect him. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. Yeah. But I felt good too. Cause like, uh, I'm like, we're like, you know, we're, we're the opposite in case you, you know, visually can't see that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, she's introverted in most cases and I'm like extroverted. Like I, I get my energy from being around people. And that was another aspect of that decision, like, man, uh, outside of the conviction of, like, man, we need to be somewhere worshiping together corporately with other believers, because it's not just about us getting something from worship, it's about us bringing something, right. you know, yeah. uh, uh, bringing something to the body, whether it's a hello or hey or a personal encouragement or exhortation with somebody that you walk across. Right. Uh, it's not just about, you know, giving, 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 uh, taking, 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 but giving, giving. So, um, that was a that was an interesting time, and um, yeah, like the fact that I didn't go passive in my conviction is probably the one thing that I, you know, give myself a little pat on the back right. with the Lord's help. It's like because I could have easily been like, yeah. all right, mm -hmm. we just went home and then been super resentful, right. not wanting to be here, and you know, setting the bad examples for my son. So uh, that was probably one of the, the one of those moments, and. Um, as, you, as I said before, we worked through it and it brought us closer together. So that's the whole purpose of being married, right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's what's up, man. And it, like you said, it's good that y'all showing that example to y'all kids too. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they don't see no, uh, they don't see their parents like going at it, trying to make decisions and like arguing. Yeah. About it, but it's like, okay, this is what we got. And it's us versus the problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, versus the yeah exactly. That, that's, that's a good dynamic. So yeah. we come to, you know what I'm saying, the last part. And it's something like I like to do whenever I'm talking to like anybody, you know, I always ask <laughs> a piece of wisdom that I can take from it. But this time I switched it up. So Josh, I asked you to give a piece of wisdom to the women looking to be married. And Lacey, I asked for you to give some advice to the men. So yeah, whoever want to go first, you know what I'm saying? Just, All right, I'll, I'll let Lacey go first. Yeah. I'll let Lacey go. <laughs> You try to steal some of my stuff. Stop. All right. So silly. So I'm going to be nice as possible. Oh, man. Don't do it like that. <laughs> ka -ka, ka -ka. Oh, is she ready? The very first thing I wrote down was man up. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> right, no. I said, you shouldn't be on the search for the right woman. Instead, focus on becoming the right man for That's good. to deserve a woman that you want. Yeah. Um, like, what kind of man would you want if you had a daughter or a sister? Mm. What kind of man would you want them to marry? Mm. Focus on becoming a man like that. You want them to be respectful and, um, mm. you know, look at, look at her the right way. Yeah. Become become that man. Uh, give the search up to God, and He will give you the desire of your heart. I wore a ring that had Psalm thirty seven four on my uh, wedding finger before I met Josh, and it was take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And He knew I wanted to be married. Yeah. So for me to like like start focusing on my relationship with God and like give marriage up and be like, all right, I'm done searching God. I'll be single. And then like, he brought that gift into my life. And it, it seems like that with other things after marriage too. Yeah. It's just like when you give up and yeah. just say, God, I'm going to give it to you. Like 
he knows the desires that are in your heart. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It's just trusting him. Yeah. Like he put those desires there. Yeah. So that's really, really good. Yeah. Like, Mine's it, definitely yeah. man, man, become man. that man. Yeah. yeah. Um, you want your yeah. daughter something to marry. Yeah. yeah. That's, and that's really good too. That whole concept, the biblical principle, really. Like Jesus says, those who lose lose their lives will gain it. And those who try to fight for their lives, they will lose it. And that's kind of sort of what happened to us. Like we had to uh, get to a point where we stopped making an uh, idol out of, uh, I guess, the idea of marriage or the desire yeah. of marriage. Yeah. And like really showing God, like, God, like more than anything, I want you. I want to be in your will right. uh, more than anything. And that's something I feel like God really, really counts. So that was a really good, good, good answer. Yeah. So y'all gave me uh, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Thinking because I had something I was going to kind of piggyback off of what she said. It was just, uh, <laughs> man, my pastor was talking about that not too long ago. He was like, so you go on Facebook, social media, and the first thing you see is, okay, I want my man to do this. I want my woman to do this. But we never once see people saying, okay, I want to do this for somebody. Yep. You know, yeah. I want to change this for myself so that I won't take this, you know what I'm saying, into the next, you know, relationship or marriage. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's good. And I feel like a lot of times we, like, project on the other people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of times the stuff that we say we wanted somebody is stuff mm-hmm. that we care about ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Like, stuff yeah. that we can't produce. So be like, okay, yeah. I want somebody that can do that. So to make yeah. me comfortable, you know what I'm saying? This, this yeah. 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 And I think it's interesting, too, what you just said, like, the only time like a marriage is actually growing and successful is when the other spouse is thinking about the other. Think yeah. about it. So yeah. if I'm thinking about Lacey and how to 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 build her up, mm-hmm. but she's not but she's thinking about Lacey too, mm-hmm. who's being left out of the equation? I'm being left out, mm-hmm. right? If and if it's vice versa, she's being left out. Mm-hmm. It's only when I'm thinking about her and how to build her up and she's thinking about me and how to build me up that both parties are being taken care of. Yeah. So that's a good point that you made too. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, you got for but yeah, you, <laughs> you mentioned uh, one piece of wisdom to give to women mm-hmm. who are desiring marriage. I really, really like what Lacey said, but I'm going to go before the whole marriage thing. This is something I shared with you a mm-hmm. while back. So a lot of us don't like, first off, I guess dating is not really even, it, it's not biblical. Uh, yeah. and, and, and the scriptures from far I can see is like, there were uh, uh, two type of like, you know, uh, relationships. It was either uh, y'all are married mm-hmm. or y'all are brothers and sisters. Yeah. Really, that's, that's kind of sort of what it is. But for the sake of, you know, this talk or whatever, if we're talking about the idea of dating a court, when you are dating court, and this is just a little piece of advice, I didn't pull this out out of the word or anything, but this is just, I guess, wisdom. Mm -hmm. When you're dating somebody or in the process of getting to know somebody, talk about the things of substance, the Mm non-negotiables. Like, you have to know how to date. So when me and Lacey were... Uh, when we were talking and really it was like, okay, we were friends, spent a whole lot of time around other people who had successful marriages. We had a whole lot of mutual friends. So we tried our best to not just, it be me and her all the time oh, yeah. um, for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, but um, talk about the things of substance. So when we were courting, we were asking each other like a tough question. So, you know, what, you know, what, what do you think, what are your thoughts and ideas on marriage? Mm-hmm. Uh, does the, uh, who wears the pants in a relationship? Mm-hmm. How many kids do you want to have? Do you want to have kids? How do you want to discipline your kids? How do you want to discipline your kids? Like, where, it's, where do you see our life in the next five, 10 years, like vision wise? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your dreams and what are your goals? So even if, even if y'all not in a court relationship, but y'all just date, mm-hmm. find some way to, to to sprinkle and pepper in you know questions of substance so you can really get an idea of where a person's headed before you choose to like commit or submit to somebody uh because for me and Lacey like 
marriage was a one time thing for us. Like divorce yeah. wasn't an option on the table. Yeah. I told her if she ever leave me, I'm going with her. <laughs> uh, it's not, not an option on the table. So we had to make for, make sure that we were on the same page and we took those extra precautions. And we asked the tough questions, like the really tough, intimate questions like, man, do you think that, uh, you know, uh, sexual relations is something that you just enjoy when you're trying to create a baby? And then when, when you get old, it's just you hang it up? Or is that something for you to enjoy all throughout your marriage lifetime? Mm -hmm. Like stuff of that nature are yeah. questions and things that we would talk about. Yeah. And you should have a list like for yourself. Like these are my non-negotiables non in a yeah. woman and women for men and talk about those things. Mm -hmm. And if somebody doesn't hit the mark for you, don't, don't lower your standard and settle. That's for men and for because women. Because it's going to be so much harder when you're married and you're dealing with like different political views, mm -hmm. different religions. Yep. Like those things need to all be talked about up front. Yep. And all up front. So you can really have a pulse on like, all right, this is somebody. And you have to remember too, if you're looking for a person, a perfect person to marry, you will never personally be married. Yeah. <laughs> no one, you ain't, you ain't perfect. And anybody that you're courting or that's a prospect of yours is not going to be perfect. So in, in the end, it's going to come down to whose baggage, whose quirks, whose, you know, whatever, uh, am I going to be willing to deal with and to work through for yeah. a lifetime, right? Yeah. That's really what it boils down to is that. So talk about those those things of substance mm -hmm. uh, and things that are really important up front. Don't date somebody just because they got a cute butt or they got some abs or because abs. or or, or because y'all like the same y'all got y'all got a same hobby yeah. or y'all like the same basketball team. Because mm -hmm. if that stuff ever changes, the whole foundation of what your relationship is was built on is gone. Mm -hmm. Right. So that'll be my one piece of advice to women. It's like, I know we all, we all are probably guilty of making like this, this wish list of our future spouse. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the things on that wish list, is really aesthetic. Right. Uh, it's not really like stuff that's going to matter right. in the long run. If you want to have a healthy, growing, godly and prosperous marriage. Right. right? Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, I want them to have, you know, I want them to bring this much money to the table, and I want them to all, all that all that stuff. With this, that's not bad. All all the, all that stuff, but yeah. the, the really essential stuff, right. the non-negotiables, have those yep. things nailed down. That's for men and for women. Mm -hmm. so. yep. It's good, man. Well, look, I just want to say I appreciate both of y'all, man. The wisdom that y'all brought, you know, what I'm saying, like to the people, and. Uh, I just want to commend y'all, you know what I'm saying, both, you know, like Josh for you stepping up and leading and Lacey for you mm -hmm. being there and I'm watching you, you know what I'm saying, like y'all got three kids now, but I'm just, you know, like watching you, you know what I'm saying, like watching you grow and seeing your strength, you know what I'm saying, holding him down, you know what I'm saying, I admire that, you know what I'm saying, like, <laughs> what'd you say? <laughs> what'd you say, uh, Josh? I said, she holding me down, man. Yeah, 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 man. And so, uh, I just want to say, you know, like, thank y'all for being that example of, you know what I'm saying, like a, a strong, growing marriage, you know what I'm saying, to, especially to, like, our generation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Man, we lost out here, you know. <laughs> you know yeah, we're we going to get found, though, man. Yeah. Like, uh, that, that was our, our hope and our goal is that, yeah. that God would, would use our marriage to, uh, as an example, and use our marriage to, to break a lot of barriers and things that we encounter in, in our culture and our generation, yeah. too. So we're we're highly honored that you would mm -hmm. uh, take this time out to even, you know, even think about having us on uh, mm -hmm. this podcast, man. It means a lot. Right. That's what's Thank up. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Thank you all again for joining, man. This has been another episode of the Covenant Man podcast. So I'll see y'all later, man. Thank y'all for joining me. I hope y'all have a good night, man. All right. You too, man. You too. All right. I'll see y'all later. All right. All right. Bye.